Welcome to our midweek devotional. My name is Andrew. I'm the curate here at St. Peter's. I'm going to read some verses from Luke 12 in a moment. Before I do that, let's pray for God's help. Our Father in heaven, we are so grateful that you give us your word, that we might know you as you are. And we pray that as we look at your word together now, you would open our eyes to see you as you are and to love you as we ought. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to read from Luke 12, starting at verse 22. Luke 12, verse 22, Jesus is speaking. And he said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to the span of his life? If then you're not able to do a smallest thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you are to eat, and what you are to drink, nor be worried, for all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Those are precious words of comfort from the Lord Jesus. I want to focus in just on one verse from that reading, verse 32 of Luke chapter 12. Let me read that again. Jesus says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I don't know about you, I like to plan. I like to be able to put things in my diary. I like to know what's happening. And one of the strange things about the times we're going through at the moment is that planning is very hard. It's sometimes hard to know quite what tomorrow will look like, let alone next week, and certainly next month. And when it's hard to know what's happening, when it's hard to plan for the future, when we don't know what's going on, it's easy, isn't it, to feel anxious. I wonder if you felt that in your heart over recent weeks, perhaps, or over 2020 as a whole. And when we're anxious, when we don't know what's going on in the world around us, it's easy to doubt God's character. What is God like? How can I trust him now? Jesus points his fearful, anxious disciples in verse 32 to three great gospel realities. Three great gospel realities for us to take hold of afresh today. Here's the first of them. Jesus is our shepherd. Fear not, little flock. Jesus says. Jesus speaks to his disciples, he speaks to us as his flock, his sheep. Sheep need a shepherd. All the way through the Bible, God speaks of himself as the shepherd of his people, the shepherd of Israel. And in the New Testament, Jesus himself takes that title. He speaks of himself, doesn't he, as the good shepherd. Hebrews 13 speaks of Jesus as the great shepherd of the sheep. And it's a beautiful picture. It speaks of care. It speaks of provision. It speaks of protection. 
In Jesus' case, of course, it speaks of the shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. The shepherd who knows us, he calls us little flock. That's not just a statement of fact, it's a statement of feeling, of his affection towards his people who so often feel vulnerable, small, insignificant. Jesus knows that. And he cares. Jesus is our shepherd. And the second reality Jesus points us to is that God is our Father. Verse 32 again, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. We speak sometimes, don't we, of people who have friends in high places. They know people who can pull some strings, who can lend a hand, who can give them a leg up. Well, friends in high places can sometimes make things happen. But every Christian believer has something far better than that. We have a father in the highest of places. Absolute in his power and perfect in his love. Whatever we're facing, we can be sure of this. He does care for us. He's our father. And he can help us. For he's our God. Jesus is our shepherd. God is our father. Thirdly, the kingdom is our inheritance. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Unlike all earthly hopes, the Christian hope is a certain hope. It doesn't depend on vaccine rollout strategies. It's guaranteed by Jesus's death and resurrection and that certain hope for christian believers is there in verse 32 it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom notice three things about this kingdom first it's a gift it's a gift it's all of god's grace it's something we're given not something we earn not something we deserve not something we obtain it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He gives it. Secondly, it's his good pleasure. This isn't something God feels grudgingly towards us about. Did you see that? It's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. This is not his duty. It's his delight. God does not give his people such a gift because he has to, but because he wants to. The Father, who is well pleased in Jesus his Son, is well pleased to give the kingdom to us. That's the kind of Father he is. It's a gift. It's a gift God is glad to give, and it is an extraordinarily generous gift. Perhaps as Christmas draws closer, you're starting to think about Christmas presents, present shopping, that kind of thing. Some people are very generous givers. I wonder if you've ever had that experience of exchanging a gift with someone, only you thought you were just giving a small present, just exchanging boxes of biscuits or something, but they have given you something thoughtful and precious and valuable some people are very generous givers. Well, how about this for a gift? Your father has given you the kingdom. How about this for a gift? A place in God's eternal reign of all reality. A seat at the table of the heavenly banquet. A place around the eternal throne of God. Jesus is piling up reason after reason after reason to trust our Father's character. He is good. He loves us. How does that help us today? Well, let me point us to two ways here in Luke 12. Firstly, it frees us from fear. 
That's what Jesus says at the start of verse 32, isn't it? Fear not, little flock. If God really is my Father, if my Father really is God, and if my Father God really is as good and gracious and generous as Jesus shows him to be, then won't that gradually loosen the grip of fear on my heart? If we're feeling afraid, facing uncertain futures, facing present challenges, Jesus wants to point us again to his Father's goodness and character. It frees us from fear and it frees us to love. It frees us to love. That's where the verses before and after verse 32 take this idea. If we're cared for like this, if we have a Father in heaven, then we don't need to be wholly self-absorbed, just worried about our own problems. It would be easy to do that at the moment. Lockdown, of course, makes it easy to look inwards. But if Jesus is our shepherd and God is our good Father, then knowing that we're loved can free us to love others. Knowing that we're cared for can free us to care for others. Knowing that God has given so generously to us, even his kingdom, can free us to be generous and to give to others. Here's how one old Christian Q&A puts some of these ideas. It asks the question, what do you believe when you say in the creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? What does that mean for a Christian to say? Here's the beautiful answer. I believe that the eternal Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who out of nothing created heaven and earth and everything in them, who still upholds and rules them by his eternal counsel and providence, is my God and Father, because of Christ his Son. I trust God so much that I do not doubt he will provide whatever I need for body and soul, and will turn to my good whatever adversity he sends upon me in this sad world. God is able to do this because he is almighty God and desires to do this because he is a faithful father. Jesus says to us, fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, how precious it is to be able to call you that. Thank you for the Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep who laid down his life, that we might become part of your family and call you our Father. Thank you that you're such a generous, loving, good, gracious Father to us. We pray that in testing times, You'd help us to know today, freshly, by the power of your spirit, your goodness and love towards us in the Lord Jesus. Please, would that free us from fear today? Please, in moments of fear, would we look again to you? And please, would that free us to love? Please give us eyes to see the needs of others. Please empower us to seek to serve. For we pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen.